Hello friends, welcome to the fast track video on electrical measurements. In this video, I am going to discuss about electrical measurements. This video will be very much helpful if you are preparing for exams like UGC NET and engineering service examinations. In this video, I am going to talk about what do you mean by error, what are the types of error, what do you mean by the torque, what are the types of torque, what do you mean by damping and its type. I am going to compare PMMC, MI and EMMC. What are the types that are available in order to measure inductance, capacitance as well as resistance and I am going to talk about star connected load and delta connected load. Now what do you mean by error? Error is nothing but deviation of measured value from the true value or I can tell error is nothing but the difference of measured value that is AM to true value that is denoted by AT. Error can be positive or error can be negative. Most of the cases error will be negative because measured value will be less than the true value. But in some cases like counter type A to D at that time measured value will be more than true value at that time you will be getting error as positive. Now what do you mean by per unit error? It is error divided by true value. If I am talking about percentage error then error divided by true value into 100 expressed in terms of percentage. Now, Error if I am classifying I can denote it as static error which is not a function of time and dynamic error which is a function of time nothing but the error varies with respect to time. Now if I am talking about accuracy, accuracy is nothing but degree of closeness of measured value towards the true value. Accuracy is always inversely proportional to percentage error. Now if I am talking about guaranteed accuracy error this is very very important if you are preparing for engine service examination. The guaranteed accuracy error will be positive or it can be negative also. Error will be always taken with respect to full scale value, nothing but GAE is always referred or always calculated with respect to full scale value. It is always specified by manufacturer like the resistance value is 1 kilo ohm plus or minus 5% or plus or minus 10%. So this much error will be there this much error will be there that one will be provided by the manufacturer now if i am talking about error error can be broadly classified into gross error systematic error and random or residual error now if i am classifying systematic error systematic error is further classified into instrumental error environmental error and observational error if i am talking about instrumental error it is further classified into manufacturing defect aging effect loading effect misuse of instrument now if I am talking about environmental error, the error which is occurred by environment in terms of noise or mechanical vibrations. So that will be stray magnetic field error, stray electric field error and temperature error. So broadly I have classified the error. How you are going to minimize the particular error? This is very very important. What mechanism you are going to adopt? In the case of engine service examination, they can ask the odd man out or they may ask you how you are going to overcome the aging effect or manufacturing effect or loading effect. So they may ask you this sort of questions. Assertion and reasoning questions is very very important. The questions will be based on this topic only. Now if I am talking about analog instruments, analog instruments are broadly classified into indicating type, recording type and integrating type. So the example of indicating type is permanent magnet moving coil, moving iron, wattmeter. The example of recording type is sesimograph, ECG and EEG. The example for integrating type is energy meter or odometer. They may ask you write an acronym of EEG and ECG also. There are three main talks in analog instruments. The first one is a deflection talk, control talk and damping talk. If you are preparing for engine service examination, this topic is very very important. They may ask you what if, if deflection talk is absent or what if, if control talk is absent. Damping torque and control torque both are absent. This sort of questions they will be asking. Now if I am talking about PMMC and moving coil, you will be having two mechanisms. The first one is spring control mechanism and the second one is gravity control mechanism. If I am making use of PMMC, then the scale what I am going to use is a linear scale. But if I am making use of gravity control mechanism, the scale will be a non-linear scale. But if I am making use of moving iron, then both in spring control mechanism as well as gravity control mechanism, the scale what you are going to use is a non-linear scale. There are three methods in damping torque. The first one is air friction damping, 
fluid friction damping, eddy current damping. Now, in order to minimize the vibrations or in order to minimize the oscillations, what you are going to do is we are going to introduce a term that is damping. So, how we are going to oppose the vibration with the help of air, with the help of fluid, with the help of eddy current. If you are making use of air, then it is air friction damping. If you are making use of oil or viscous elements, then it is fluid friction damping. And if you are making use of current coil, then it falls under eddy current damping. If I am talking about order of effectiveness, then eddy current damping is far more better when compared to fluid friction damping and air friction damping. In the case of air friction damping, resistance or opposition to the vibrations will be very much less. Now in the case of permanent magnet moving coil, we are going to make use of permanent magnet which is a horseshoe magnet which is made up of all nickel, aluminium, nickel, cobalt. So this is very very important. Quite number of times they have asked this one. So the material used in a permanent magnet or the material used in permanent magnet design in the case of PMMC, your total it is all nickel which is a hard magnetic material. Now if I am comparing PMMC and moving iron, the scale that we are going to use in the case of PMMC is a linear scale but here we are going to make use of a non-linear scale. Here the current measuring part is a movable in the case of PMMC, in the case of MI it is a constant one. In the case of PMMC, you can measure only DC quantities. In the case of moving iron, you can measure both AC quantity as well as DC quantity. Range is restricted in the case of PMMC, that is at max you can measure the current up to 20 milliampers and the voltage up to 100 millivolts. But in the case of moving iron, you can measure a current up to 50 amperes and the voltage up to 250 volts. So there is a large diverse in the case of moving iron. So most of the cases we are going for moving iron only. Now if I am talking about problematic part, especially if you are preparing for engine service examination, this topic is very very important and formula based on this is also important. What do you mean by mean or average? It is sum of observations divided by total number of observation. What do you mean by average deviation? D is given by how much it has deviated from the mean. It is mod of d1 plus mod of d2 plus so on to mod of dn all divided by n. If I am talking about standard deviation, if n is less than or equals to 20, this is the formula. If n is greater than 20, then this is the formula. What do you mean by d1? d1 is nothing but how much x1 is been deviated from mean, nothing but x1 minus x bar. d2 means how much x2 data is deviated from the mean, that is d2 minus x bar. Similarly, dn is nothing but xn minus x bar. Here x bar means average. This is also important n number of times they have asked this question. To minimize temperature error or environmental error, we are going to make use of swamping resistance. We are going to make use of swamping resistance. It is made up of manganin. It is made up of manganin. Again this is very very important. Resistance of swamping resistors is 20 to 30 times more of meter coil resistance nothing but if you want to increase the range you are going to make use of swamping resistors which is made up of manganin. If you want to measure voltage we are going to make use of voltmeter so for voltmeter measurement swamping resistors are connected in series so this is very very important swamping resistors are connected in series but for ammeter measurement swamping resistors are connected in parallel so these two things are very very important. Advantages of using swamping resistors is the first advantage is percentage error decreases, accuracy further increases. The main drawback of using swamping resistors, the range is more but the sensitivity is less or the sensitivity decreases. So this is very very important. Now if I am talking about loading error, to minimize loading error in the case of ammeter, we make use of clamp on ammeter nothing but there will be no any physical connection in order to measure current. So clamp on ammeter we can measure DC quantity as well as AC quantity. In order to measure DC quantities we make use of all effect. In order to measure AC quantities it works on AC transformers. Moving iron there are two types the first one is attraction type and the second one is repulsion type. This topic is very very important you have to compare and contrast PMMC nothing but permanent magnet moving coil versus moving iron. The scale what you are going to use in the case of PMMC is a linear scale and the scale what you are going to use in a moving iron is a non-linear scale. N number of times this question they have asked in UGC NET. The moving part in the case of PMMC is movable. In this case it is a fixed or a constant parameter. 
the magnetic flux density B is of the order of 0.121 Weber per meter square. In this case, it is 0 0.0062, 0 0.0075 Weber per meter square. Torque is very much high in the case of PMMC and weight is also more in the case of PMMC because we are going to make use of permanent magnet or hard material we are going to use. Talk to weight ratio if I am talking, it is more in the case of PMMC even compared to moving iron. Sensitivity is inversely proportional to current with full scale deflection. Sensitivity of PMMC is more when compared to moving iron. Can measure only DC quantity. It can measure both AC as well as DC quantity. Again, this topic is also very very important. A number of times they have asked. Range measurement. Current is limited up to 20 milliamperes. You can measure voltage up to 100 millivolts. But in the case of moving iron, you can measure current up to 50 amperes and voltage up to 250 volts. PMMC, it occupies huge area or more area. But in the case of moving iron, it is simple in construction and occupies less area. Now, if I am talking about EMMC, nothing but electromagnetic moving coil, it consists of both fixed coil as well as moving coil. Moving coil was there in the case of PMMC and fixed coil was there in the case of MI. But in the case of EMMC, it consists of both fixed coil as well as moving coil. It is used to minimize or reduce hysteresis loss as well as eddy current loss. Damping used is air friction damping. We know that order of effectiveness is less in the case of air friction damping. If I am making use of EMMC, you can measure voltage, current, power measurement can be done. Even power factor measurement which is given by cos phi, you can measure power factor also and you can measure even frequency also. Now if I am talking about measurement of single phase transformer without watt meter, you are going to make use of 3 volt meters or you are going to make use of 3 ammeters. So in the case of 3 volt meter method, we are going to make use of only 3 volt meter. We are not going to make use of any watt meters. But in the case of 3 ammeter method, we are going to make use of only 3 ammeters. That is connected like this. Watt meter always read average power. 3 phase requires only 2 watt meters. This theorem is very very important. Blondes theorem is valid for both balanced and as well as unbalanced load. Now if I am talking about star connected network and delta connected network, in the star connected network this node I am going to consider as a neutral node. So the connection is given like this and in the case of delta connected load the connection is like this. You should know the conversion of star to delta as well as delta to star. right? But in the case of star connected load, the load current is equals to the phase current and load voltage is equals to a root 3 times of phase voltage. This relation is very very important. But in the case of delta connected load, current load current is equals to root 3 times of phase current and load voltage is equals to phase voltage. This is very very important. The power in the case of star connected load equals to root 3 times of VLIL cos phi. But in the case of delta connected load, it is given by root 3 times of VLIL into cos phi. Which power is more? Star connected load is more or delta connected load is more? Comment your answers in the comment section. This table is very very important if you are preparing for engine service examination. Measurement of 3 phase power using 2 watt meter method. If phi equals to 0, nothing but power factor equals to cos phi which is equals to 1. Both watt meters is going to read root 3 by 2 into VL times of IL. Nothing but for unity power factor, readings of 2 watt meters are equal. When phi equals to 30, that means power factor which is equals to 0 0.866, one watt meter is going to read half of the other one. Nothing but reading of one watt meter is double than other. If phi equals to 60, then cos phi equals to 0 0.5, nothing but power factor will be 0 0.5 then one watt meter is going to read the value as zero. Nothing but one of the watt meter reads zero. If phi equals to 90, both watt meter read the same magnitude value but with opposite sign. Nothing but power factor equals to zero. Watt meter one, if it is reading the positive value, then watt meter two is going to read a negative value. So power can't be negative. Only the thing is you will be talking about whether it is dissipating or it is absorbing. Now if I am talking about resistance measurement, low value of resistance you can measure, medium value of resistance you can measure as well as high value of resistance you can measure. If you are going for low value measurement then you are going to make use of Kelvin's double bridge or potentiometer it is short in turn called as pot. But if I am making use of medium resistance value we are going to make use of voltmeter ammeter method and we are going to make use of substitution method Wheatstone bridge as well as we are going to make use of ohmmeter method. 
but in the case of high resistance measurement we are going for loss of charge method mega instrument direct deflection method mega ohm bridge if you are preparing for engineering service examination this topic is very very important nothing but mega instrument measurement of inductance maxwell's inductance capacitance bridge it is medium quality coil hayes bridge high q coil owens bridge it is low q coil and some bridge low q coil m m h h this is the simple trick how you can remember a number of times they have asked the question in ugc neat exams the questions will be of match the following maxwell's inductance capacitance bridge hayes bridge owens bridge and anderson bridge on the right side they will be giving medium q coil high q coil low q coil etc measurement of capacitance we are having d sorties bridge modified d sorty bridge shearing bridge shearing bridge is very very important a number of times they have asked this question d sorty bridge it is used for the measurement of capacitance if you want to measure capacitance as well as dielectric you are going to make use of modified d sorty bridge shearing bridge is used for measurement of capacitance dielectric as well as loss angle this is very very important so friends this completes electrical measurements in my previous video i have discussed with mechanical transducers if you have not watched the video links are provided in the description please go through it in the next video i am going to talk about electronic measurements if you followed in the lecture please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel craving yarn all the best for your exams thank you